Hi, this is JB from Not Allowed Summer Arkham. Welcome to another Arkham Horror LCG campaign playthrough. And this time we are going to play through the Alice in Wonderland fanmade scenario by the Beard. And we are playing with Wendy Adams, the Orchid. Orchin. <laughs> the Urchin, I mean. Uh, so, uh, who else is better going into Wonderland than the. Uh, kid orphan <laughs> so uh, yeah uh, first off I think we'll look at Wendy's deck before we start reading all of the text so uh, this is a spoiler warning and I will be reading everything uh, from the campaign guide and from the cards in this video so be warned if you want to experience Alice in Wonderland yourself you can play it on um, Tabletop simulator, for example, and of course you can print out the cards like I have done. It's not uh, cheap, but it's worth it, I can assure you. So, without further delay, let's hop into Wendy's, video, um, Wendy's deck. Okay, and we are over on ArkhamCDB.com, and I'm not going to talk about the whole deck, but the main point of this deck is that this is illicit Wendy, so, I have taken in the thick of it, just so I get the three experience, so I can get two copies of Fence into the deck. Uh, this is because with this I can play some illicit cards, either fast or with a, a discount. And the fast is really key, uh, you save a lot of... Uh, actions by playing the cards fast and there are a lot of illicit cards in the deck. Uh, the last experience I put into one of upgrading one of the lot picks to level one so uh, that is the three experience. So the illicit cards are 25 automatic. I'm not really sure I'm going to keep this in the deck but we'll see. Uh, two copies of lot picks. One is upgraded to level one. Uh, thieves kit then we have uh, Disguise, uh, the fences are illicit also, mm, we have Pickpocketing, then that is all of the illicit cards, but I'm also rocking some uh, events from the Rogue, so breaking and entering. Uh, this is basically the a little criminal when the Adams, uh, so Breaking and entering sounds okay. Well, there's paranoia as our basic weakness, so yeah, there's that. Uh, other than that, it's basic rogues, uh, I mean, survivor stuff. We have a leather coat, uh, Peter Sylvestre, uh, Scottner's catalog, because this combos really well, because a lot of the um, illicit cards are items, so we can play them with Scottner's catalog. Uh, Tractures are an item, we can use that uh, for those. And then we have uh, Lucky and Resourceful to uh, recur the Luckies, etc. Well, uh, that is the deck, so I'm not talking about that more. I will look into the upgrades while I play this campaign, but uh, we'll hop back over to the scenario. Okay, and... Uh, I think that is everything, so without further delay, let's get started. Okay, and we'll start by reading the flavor text of the campaign, so the prologue. And so, the prologue. The incident was at first assumed to be a case of fatigue and paranoia. A traveling English woman by the name of Alice Liddell collapsed screaming at the trains uh, as the train arrived at Arkham Northside Station. Other passengers tried to console her, but Miss Liddell was in a state of sheer panic. The man dressed in newspaper, uh, the goat and the bill, you saw them too, didn't you? She pleaded to the onlookers, but they only shook their heads in be bewilderment. It's still following me, after all, this distance. How far will be far enough? The young woman's panic quickly mounted and 
the passengers called to the conductor to escort her off the train. She begged them not to keep her, that she must continue her journey immediately, but her protests were ignored. Who could believe such a preposterous story? You yourself might have doubted her too, had you not also seen these strange figures that Alice described in the brief moment before she collapsed. You depart the train as soon as possible, but find no trace of Miss Little on the platform. Porters tell you that the police got involved and decided to take her to Arkham Asylum for temporary care. You wrinkle your nose at the prospect of the infamous sanitarium doing her any good sort of good. Whatever Alice saw on the train must have existed, however, briefly, and you must speak with her to find out what it was and why it fills her with such a powerful dread. You head home to prepare to have an in-depth talk with Miss Liddell. Arkham has long been plagued by a weird ghoulish and arc- the arcane. It may not have been as big a shock to you as it might have been to others, but the fact that a foreigner was affected immediately upon arriving in Arkham strikes you especially oddly. As you gather your things at home, your mind, mind runs over the hundred of possible evils that could be haunting Miss Liddell, it's less pleasant than the last. You pocket some weapons and extra material on the off chance that you'll have to confront anything sinister. Your own house lies across the city from the asylum, giving you plenty of time to speculate as you trek over to Arkham's downtown district. You hope that it's just your eyes playing on your fears, but the city seems darker than it should be for a summer afternoon. Scenario 1. Arkham in Wonderland You enter the asylum and approach the receptionist, expecting a long and tedious chain of permissions, but are pleasantly surprised to find that Alice can be freely visited. Miss Liddell was quite cooperative upon her arrival and was granted a furnished room without restraints. An orderly escorts you down one of the less unpleasant halls and into Alice's room. She sits on the edge on, of the bed with her hands folded, and her head snaps up as you enter. Apprehension plastered on her face. Once you have make it clear that you believe her story, however, Alice uh, relaxes visibly, but her worried expression remains. What you saw was a dream, she explains slowly. One from my childhood of a strange place called Wonderland. How innocent it once was. Her voice trails off and she begins to tremble. When I was younger, I believed it to be a real place. It all seemed too real to me then. And it was that belief that drew the attention of something dark. A great and terrible creature that dwells in shadows and feeds on dreams. But rather than devour Wonderland, the creature strengthened it. No, raised it like cattle. Fattened it. Wonderland became more vivid and real than I ever imagined it could be. And it grew beyond my ability to control. Now, in recent months, my dreams have begun to manifest in the real world. Her story is utterly fantastical, but you find yourself drawn in even more. Alice continues with deep terror beginning to surface. The creature is using me to bridge the gap of reality. It fishes to merge the waking world with Wonderland in order to consume them both. It began in my hometown in England, where the world began to unravel around me. I fled, hoping to find a way to escape it, but it followed me to no no matter where I go. Alice looks to you with exhausted desperation in her eyes. And now that I cannot leave it, uh, leave it is only a matter of time until your own city of Arkham begins to unravel too. You must find a way to stop this being for you own for your own sake if not for mine please you must find a way you reassure alice to be to the best of your ability and depart the asylum wondering 
how you can even begin to bis uh, this bizarre task. As you exit the familiar sight of Arkham's downtown district ripples before you, your eyes like a band of hot air in the summer, slowly beginning to distort. Before you can act any further, a grinning mouth appears before you, and a stripped cat soon blossoms around it. Welcome to Wonderland, it's a, it suddenly purrs. Or perhaps you had better welcome Wonderland instead. The longer you wait, the more of it there is, and the less of you there may be. Kurant Naka is hungry, and it is very nearly supper time. Okay, and we have done the setup for the scenario, so let's hop over to the first turn. Okay, and we are set up, so let's read the act, again the and act cars, a tide of madness. Strange waves of distortion sweep over Arkham, devolving in quickly, in, it in, in quickly into chaos. Uh, the city is rapidly being warped and blended with the one land of Alice's dreams. Buildings and landmarks distort into unfamiliar forms, while the people unfortunate enough to be caught in these ripples are likewise distorted. You hope that you can find some way to stop the, or reverse these changes before you yourself are transformed by the events, and the doom threshold is only three. Uh, three. Uh, Act 1, uh, Sphinx's Riddle. You question the strange cat, but it speaks in circular logic and nonsensical terms. You get the feeling that it is testing you rather than helping you. If you uh, want actual answers on how to stop current Naka, you'll have to scour the city and watch the changes up close. And we need two clues to advance. Okay, and uh, we have the map set up here. We start in the Arkham Asylum. Uh, these are double-sided locations, so on the other side there is a Wonderland location. So these uh, will start flipping over at some point. And uh, we have uh, clues on here, and we are ready to start. So uh, let's see, I'll draw my opening hand. Oh yeah, and uh, in the thick of it, I took one mental and one physical trauma. So I start with six and still six left. Okay, so we get the uh, breaking and entering, leather coat, or, uh, 25 automatic, uh, upgraded lockpicks and disguise. So I'm actually going to get rid of these and draw three different cards. So we get lone wolf, thieves kit and breaking and entering. Okay, I think this is uh, an okay start here. No fences, but we got the upgraded lockpick, so that's uh, really good. We can start getting clues fast. Okay, and um, quick shuffle after the mulligan, and we are ready to start, so... First action, we will play Lone Wolf, just putting it uh, here, because I don't have any arcane slots, or maybe here. Then I will play the Lockpicks, and there are, I'll put these keys on, the, on it. look nicer. Last action, I will exhaust the lockpicks and investigate. So I'm investigating uh, 7 versus 3. Oh yeah, uh, before we start, so uh, skulls are minus x. x is the e equal to the number of Wonderland locations in Thanax 5 and uh, Elder Thing Token is minus 2. If you are at the Wonderland location, discard a card from your hand at random. <clears throat> okay, so the first token pull of the game, and it is minus three, but still we succeed, so let's count. Uh, we are 
7 versus 4, uh, 3. And we pulled a minus 3. So do we break a lock pick? Yeah, unfortunately we do. But luckily that was the upgraded version, so it doesn't go out of play immediately. So that is everything. Uh, we will go to upkeep. Oh yeah, there's an action here. Here, heal one horror, limit once per turn. Okay, so we draw a card, we get fence, and we gain a resource. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. First encounter card of the game is Cognitive Dissonance, Paradox Flaw, Revelation. If you do not control any clues, Cognitive Dissonance gains search, otherwise test uh, Intellect 2. This test gets plus one difficulty for each clue on you control max 3. If you fail, place one of your clues onto your location. If you fail by two or more, lose one action. Well, um, I'm just going to test this. So, I am testing 3 versus 3, because we have one clue. I can just grab the clue again. Well, it's a 0, so we pass, so nothing happens. That's good. So, first action. Uh, we could heal the horror here, but I think we need to start moving. So... I think I'll go to Bank of, Bank of Arkham, and there's a, a <coughs> triggered ab ability here. When you take the resource action, gain an additional resource limit once per turn. So I'm gaining a resource. Oh yeah, and we have the Lone Wolf, so we actually got one more resource. And last action, we will use the lockpicks to investigate. Next round we can start playing more more stuff onto the onto us, hopefully. Okay, and uh, uh, we are testing seven versus three again. Minus one. Now we won't break a lock pick, and we get the clue, and we are able to advance. So we will uh, advance. New neighbors. The cat appears again on the tree limb, just above you, grinning as ever. Truth is far more true when you, uh, uh, true when found than told it first. But the shadows are growing long. Don't you think it's time you went home? Not your home, of course, but Alice's. It's in the neighborhood, you see. Put the set-aside abandoned house into play. The lead investigator must immediately take control of the set-aside chess hider cat. Greening Guide card. Shuffle the set aside. Cheshire Cat Encounter set into the Encounter deck. House Sitting. Amid the chaotic overlap of this other world, an English country house has appeared in the neighborhood just south of you. If uh, what the cat suggests, suggests is true, then the key to stopping these worlds from merging lies inside. After an investigator enters the abandoned house, advance. Okay, so we get this abandoned house over here. And uh, it's connected to here and to here. And Yeah, so we get control of the Cheshire Cat, and uh, I'm just putting it here, and I'll read it in a moment, and we shuffle the encounter um, set into the encounter deck. So, Cheshire Cat, uh, we have it on uh, greening guide side face up, so it is permanent. When you would fail a skill test by exactly one. You automatically succeed instead flip the Cheshire Cat. Paused. When the player controlling the Cheshire Cat would be defeated or would resign, choose another player. That player immediately takes 
control of the Cheshire Cat. And the other side is, of course, when you would succeed uh, a skill test by exactly one, you automatically fail instead, flip the Cheshire Cat. Uh, forced when the player controlling the Cheshire Cat would be defeated or would resign. Choose another player. That player immediately takes control of the Cheshire Cat. So it will be helping and hindering us throughout the campaign. Okay, and... And that is our turn. No enemies will go to upkeep. And uh, we get the Faustian Bargain and gain a resource. So that is that round, how this ready is. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, and counter card is Haunting Shade, Hunter Aloof. Haunting Shade's location gets plus two throughout. If there are no clues on its location, Haunting Shade loses Aloof and gets plus one fight and plus one damage. And there are no clues here, so this engages us immediately. And that's not good. Uh, let's see. Unfortunately, we don't have the disguise ready, but I will be evading it. So it's a four evade. How can I make that better? Mm. Well, it only hits for one brain damage, so... Yeah, I think I'll just uh, do a trick here. So I'm not going here yet. So first action, I'll take an attack of opportunity. Move here. And now I will try to evade it. Oh yeah, and we gain a resource from Lone Wolf. Mm. Okay, um, I am testing 4 versus 3. Zero, we succeed, so this is evaded. And it has a loop here, so it won't engage. And I'm not picking up this clue here. I think I can... Oh yeah, we spent these two. Uh, oh yeah, it has Hunter. Yeah, well at least we can move there, grab the clue, oh, we'll move here, uh, uh, no, uh, I think now I know how to do this, so I'll play fence, then that, that is my last action, but as a fast action, I will exhaust fence. And this uh, disguise gains fast, so I'll play the disguise here. And it has four supplies on it. I think I'll put these on it. <clears throat> okay, and that is my turn, so uh, enemy, nothing happens, upkeep, this guy ready is, is aloof, so it's just there on the location, and I'll mark it down. So it's just hanging around in the newspaper or office. And uh, we'll draw a card, another disguise, we'll get a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the uh, next round. Okay, we'll add a doom so the agenda advances. And it is the only agenda. So, what dreams may come? The city is coming apart at the seams while shadowy creatures further unravel it by consuming anything they can there apart. Buildings collapse as their bricks turn into ivory dominoes. Street lamps pop and blossom like daisies, and the very ground shifts like a rug on a polished floor. As distortions grow stronger, you wonder if the chances can possibly be reversed. Choose the Arkham location that is closest to Arkham Asylum that does not have the Wonderland trait. 
flip that location to its Wonderland side and place one clue per investigators on it. Each investigator at that location takes one damage and one horror. If each Arkham location in play also has the Wonderland trait, each investigator who has not resigned is defeated and suffers a physical or mental trauma. Your choice. Otherwise, flip this agenda back to its A side. Okay, so the closest location is this. And unfortunately, we have to place one clue there, so we need to go pick that up if we want the two victory points. And uh, that's it. We'll continue. So the encounter card is Impossible Paths. Attach Impossible Paths to your location post. When you would take an action to move from the attached location, test Agility 0. This test gets difficulty increased by 1 for each location connected to your location. If you fail, cancel the effects of the move. Double action discarded possible paths. <clears throat> okay. So I'll put the impossible paths card here. The shade is still there. I think I'll <clears throat> go get this clue here, come back here, and try to get to abandoned house next round. Or get those victory points. We'll see. Um so, first action, we'll try to move here, and I'm committing the other disguise to this test. So, we are testing 5 versus uh, 4. It is an Elder Sign, so if when this amulet is in play, you automatically succeed instead, so it's a 0, but that's in good enough. So we'll succeed in moving. Uh, then we will investigate with the lockpicks as our second action. Um, so we are seven versus four. There is also an action here. Spend one resource, search the top six cards of your deck for an item or spell card and draw it. Shuffle your deck. I think I'm okay without. Oh yeah, and we gain one resource from Lone Wolf. I'm forgetting that always. So I'm doing this from now on. I'll put one here so that moves here uh, on my next uh, start of turn. So investigating, it is a skull, and skull is minus one because there's only one location in place, so we won't break a lockpick, but we'll get this clue. Last action, I'll just move back here so this guy doesn't haunt here and get, engage me. <coughs> or we could go up here. I'm actually doing that. So it hunts here in the enemy phase, doesn't engage. And this gets plus two shroud, it's not a problem. And uh, we're ready, we draw a resourceful and gain a resource. So that is that round, let's go to the next round. We add another doom, and counter card is... Uh, Curioser and Curioser. Revelation put Curioser and Curioser in the plane your threat area force as an additional cost to investigate if there are more clues on any other location than on your location, take one horror. Action test will about three if you succeed discard curioser and curioser. That doesn't affect us uh, that much. Uh, first action, we will investigate. So that raises the shroud to four, but we'll use the lock picks again. Oh yeah, and I gave this. And uh, as a I'll play the thief's kit fast with fence. And uh, yeah, I could actually, yeah, let's save the lockpicks for now. I will breaking and entering here. So 
will play this. So we are investigating uh, seven versus four. Seven versus four. So we are up by three. And it is a minus one. So we get the clue. But we also will automatically. Uh, we will automatically evade because we succeeded by two or more. So this is evaded. That is just so we slow it down. Oh yeah, it's here. Let's just put it like here. So it is. It is it? It is exhausted. Second action, we'll move here. And last action, we'll use the lock ticks to get this clue. <coughs> so. We are investigating uh, 7 versus 3. It is uh, the elder thing. Minus 2 if you are at a vulnerable location. Okay, we are not. So we succeed by 1. So we get the clue, but we break a lot pick. That's okay. Still have 1. Uh, no enemy actions will go to upkeep. This guy readies. This readies. We'll draw a card. Another breaking and entering. And we gain a resource. Oh yeah, we've got this resource. No, this is at the end of the round. Okay, so we gain a resource. And that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. Encounter card is... Curioser and Curioser. So we have two of these. Just stack them. <coughs> There's probably only one clue on each occasion, so we don't mind that much. Uh, first action, we'll try to move to Abandoned House. So I'm committing resourceful, and I, well, I don't have any, any survivor cards in the discard, so that's okay, but I want to succeed. So five versus for it is a zero so we pass this test get to move to the abandoned house and we get to advance the way in you open the door to the uh, quaint house that and step inside hesitantly the rooms are mostly bare and what little furniture remains is covered dusty white sheets. The whole search seems more futile by the moment, until you enter a room where uh, whose only furnishing is a large mirror on the mantel above the fireplace. Curiously, the mirror surface ripples indeterminately, as, and through it you can see an entirely different room. As you approach for a closer look, the scratching of paws on the old wooden floor directs directs your attention back to the hall behind you. A white rabbit dressed in old Victorian clothing dashes away, clutching a pocket watch and mumbling to itself. You won't get a chance to investigate both before Arkham unravels completely. The investigators must decide. Choose one. We have to find out what that rabbit is up to. Put the set-aside white rabbit into play at abandoned house. Advance to Act 3A following the white rabbit. Or we have to fit Figure out how to get inside that mirror. Put the set aside the looking glass into play at abandoned house. Advance to act 3A through the looking glass. Well, um, I have beforehand decided that I'll put the looking glass into play. So after you successfully investigate uh, abandoned house, place one of your clues on the looking glass instead. Remove three clues from the looking glass. Resign. You step through the looking glass. Okay. So is that a, that a stupid decision? Because after you succeed in place one of you, so we we have to investigate this, but this will. Deal us horror. So, <clears throat> do we die to horror before we can complete that? Uh, we have the clues, but I, I think we'll go get these clues first. 
Uh, I think I'll have to try and get rid of these. Oh yeah, and this moves here. <coughs> okay, well, we'll figure that out. Okay. Well, uh, second action is move here, and... Uh, oh yeah, um, before that, let's read the... So we advanced through the looking glass, so... Through the looking glass. At the end of the round, if there are no clues on locations, place one clues on a abandoned house from the token bank. Okay, there are still clues on locations. <clears throat> Objected after each undefeated investigator has resigned the premise. Okay, now we'll move up here. And last action, we'll go up here. We'll get this clue. So at the end of the round, deal one horror to each... Ah, we won't go there. We'll go there next round. Okay, and that is my turn. This guy must hunt here. Upkeep, we draw paranoia, we lose all of our resources, and we gain one resource. That's good time to trigger that. And uh, that's it. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom, so this agenda advances. So this flips. We place one clue on it. We really don't care. It doesn't have victory on it. So we'll grab these, head there and start doing that. Okay. Encounter card to this round is Edge of your vision test the willpower axe. Axe is equal to your location's shroud value. It is true. If you fail, search the encounter, discard pile and deck for a shadow enemy and spawn it in case you if you there. You search the encounter deck, shuffle it, uh, then take one horror for each shadow enemy at the location. Uh, I doubt I'm using the Faustian bargain and or anything, so I'm committing that to the test. So testing four versus two. Elder sign. It is a zero, so we succeed. <coughs> okay. Now we gain the lone wolf box. Then I will use. Lock picks to investigate here. And um, we are investigating uh, seven versus two. Zero. We'll grab this. We'll move up here and we'll investigate using the thieves kit. Uh, we are investigating four versus because we are using our agility instead of intellect. So four versus three minus two. We fail. That sucks. Well, we'll do it next round. Uh, this enemy hunts over here. Upkeep. We draw lone wolf and gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We will draw. Uh, yeah, we will add a doom. I mean, and counter card is edge of your vision. So just uh, will for okay. So I am testing three versus three. Really don't mind if I fail this. Elder sign zero, so we pass. Okay. We get the lone wolf. Uh, we'll use the lockpicks. Oh yeah, uh, at the end of the round, deal one horror. So we got one horror. 
unfortunately. So we are using the lock picks. Uh, 7 versus 3. Minus 2. Uh, we'll break the last lock pick, unfortunately. So this breaks, but we'll get the clue at least. Now we will move and we will actually stay here for one turn and we will try to get rid of one of these. So I'm testing willpower 3, so I um, hope to get at least one of these removed. Okay, so hopefully we can get one of these rooms. So 3 versus 3 and uh, 0. Okay, now we have enough sanity to go here and do it, I think. Okay, well, enemy turn. This guy is aloof here, so we'll go to upkeep. Scoffner's catalog, a bit late to the part, but I don't mind. So, we had a resource, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom. And counter card for this round is uh, Twisted Citizen. Spawn location with the most clues. So it spawns here, so it engages us. Uh, that's unfortunate, but still not the worst. I think we need to revisit this location because it will be the next one to flip. So we might do some management here. So this guy engages us. So first action. We will uh, use the disguise to evade. So you get plus two agility for this evasion attempt. If you succeed and the revealed enemy is non-elite, it doesn't really do in the next upkeep phase. So that's that's really good. So we are evading and we succeed and we put two here because it's like twice evaded. Second action, we'll move down here. And last action, we will uh, investigate. No, uh, we'll try to get rid of Uh, we try to get rid of this one. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just stand here. We try. We take the first action. No point in moving there yet. Next turn, this will flip, so we'll move there. Yeah, it's much much smarter that way. Okay. Uh, minus two, we fail. We'll try again. Oh yeah, we have four willpower, so we fail by exactly one, so the Cheshire Cat actually flips, and we succeed. So that's great. And last action. Mm. We don't really need the clue here, so I'm just going to draw a card. Okay. Enemy actions, nothing happens. Upkeep. We draw Wendy's amulet and gain a resource. Or we gain the lone wolf resource also. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Oh yeah, this uh, loses one of these. So next round it will ready. So that is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a doom so that ad uh, advances. Okay, so same thing, we just flip another location, so this is the closest one for Shroud, and we put one clue there, so we need to get that clue to get the victory points. 
but after that we have plenty of time because the next one is this and it doesn't have big three points. Okay. Uh, the encounter card is distortion. Discard any number of cards from your hand or from play whose total cost is equal to the greatest greater than your location shroud value. Oh yeah, we don't gain any resources here actually. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll remove a few resources from Lone Wolf and from the upkeep places. So discarding comes. Okay. So the shroud here is three. I discard the right uh, for twenty-five automatic, and that's that. Okay, first action. We'll move over here. We'll use breaking and entering to investigate. Pain two. Yes, and uh, we'll grab the clue. Nothing else happens. We will move back here. And next round, we'll move here and start doing that. Okay, upkeep, nothing happens. This guy ready, so it engages us again. That is still aloof. Oh, crap. This guy gets doom. Well, that sucks. No worries. Okay, so we'll basically advance next round. Okay, so we gain a card, track shoes, and we don't gain a resource. So, so that is that round. Let's go to the next round. Okay, uh, well. Yeah, so we add a doom, so these actually go away, and we flip this one. And we get an encounter card, cognitive dissonance, so revelation, if you do not control any clues, okay. Okay, we'll just test, so this is a max plus three, so it is five, uh, intellect five test. And I am committing the Avendis Amulet and Scoffner's Catalog to the test. We are testing 6 versus 5. Minus 1, we pass. Nothing happens. Okay. First action, we will disguise this guy. So using one supply here. We are evading uh, 6 versus 2, minus 2. It is double evaded again. Uh, yeah, at the end of the meter space, this gets one doom on it. And second action, we'll move here. Last action, we will use the deep skip to investigate. And I'm committing the truck shoes to the test. Actually, I'm committing lone wolf to the test. We are investigating uh, uh, five versus two. Minus two. We'll place one clue here. And we gain a resource. Okay, enemy face. This enemy hunts here, engages us. Upkeep. This ready is. Oh, yeah, it hits us for one horror. Oh, well, we'll just uh, get rid of it next round. Yeah, we'll draw a card, another lockpicks, and gain a resource. That is that round. Let's go to the next round. We add a Doom, and counter card is. Uh, Petulant Creature, Search, Revelation, Flip the Cheshire Cat, so that's actually good for us. 
But the search. Uh, abandoned reason. Test will power three. If you fail, attach abandoned reason to your location and place one doom on it. Pause. If abandoned has no doom in it, discard it. Take one horror. Remove one doom from abandoned. Okay. Whatever. Testing four versus three. Minus one will pass. Okay. First action, we will disguise the haunting shade, committing this uh, track shoes. Seven versus uh, four. Uh, no, seven versus three. Zero. Disguise evaded. And it gets pl uh, two. Sleepy time tokens. Oh yeah, and this already is at the end of the round. Okay. And it gets one in, at the end of the middle space. Uh, one doom. Okay. Uh, la first action, second action is uh, investigate using the thieves kits. I am investigating a five versus two. Plus one. We'll place one clue here. Last action, we'll investigate using the Thieves Kit again. Oh yeah, and we get one Lone Wolf with Sauce. I'm actually playing the... Uh, using the Fence to play Lockpicks fast, and I'm using the Lockpicks. So, 7 versus 2. Minus 1, we'll place... One more clue there, and that is our turn. Enemy face, nothing happens, upkeep, this gets removed. We'll draw a card, letter code, and general source. That is that round, let's go to the next round. Okay, well, this will be the final round, so uh, we'll add Doom. Uh, this will advance, this will flip, and we'll get an encounter card, we'll get one of these, it doesn't matter, and this gets one doom on it, and first action, we will resign, by spending these three clues. Okay, if each Undefeated investigator has resigned. Advance. Proceeding backward. You slowly begin to notice patterns in the distortion sweeping over Arkham. There are moments when the boundaries between the two worlds weaken. You spend some time leaning, uh, learning the rhythm and quirks of the distortions before returning to the abandoned house. With proper timing, you leap forward at as the mirror surface ripples, and you pass through it completely, as if diving through water. Resolution 2. So, resolution 2. Uh, it's defeated investigator should resolve investigator defeat first. Well... We didn't get that, so the sound of Arkham's collapse vanishes completely as you cross through the glass. You glance backwards to, the, to see only blackness with splashes of color and shapes turning slowly. You're not sure if you can return the way you came, or if you even want to, with the way that the city was being torn apart. You stand transfixed until the heat and crackle of the fire beneath the mantle, rose your thoughts. This is no time to be waiting and wondering. You must find what lies beyond the mirror. In your catalog record that the investigators went through the looking glass. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory axe value of each card in the victory uh, display. Proceed to resolution 3. I hope you'll for forgive our cold hospitality. The welcoming committee simply couldn't be arranged. The Cheshire cat appears before you, its grin ever constant, for the first time since the danger started. 
you at least have a moment to chastise the cat. Appearing and disappearing, helping you and hindering you, it only provides to muddle your understanding of the bizarre events. I'm afraid I can't help it. The cat purrs serenely. My nature is madness. Everyone is mad in Wonderland, you see. You yourself are beginning to go mad, or else you wouldn't be here. You'd like to refu uh, refute the cat, but you feel as if you are already walking a path of madness in trying to save Arkham from the bizarre occurrences. The Cheshire cat orbits you slowly, observing you from all angles as it speaks. Still, I am a creature of Wonderland, and it is my best interest to preserve my home, just as it is in your best interest to preserve yours. Quizzically, Alice has entrusted you with both. The cat rises up to stare you into the, in the eye and uncomfortably close distance. You will carry on, of course, but how will you carry on? Like a surgeon cutting out the infection, its head detached to punctuate the point, or like a miner blasting all to oblivion. The cat's body scatters as it blows apart, but the head remains eerily in place. Whatever you, uh, whatever you trim gently or tear it out by the roots, any further future in preferable is prefer preferable to being consumed utterly. Alice would agree. I should think, assuming she is still lucid after being made into a gateway, of course. The cat's head fades away, leaving only its grin behind once more. You have a lot to consider and a long road ahead. As you travel through Alice's dreams, the fate of the mad realm of Wonderland also rests within your hands. Each denizen that you aid is or destroy has a direct effect on the stability of the realm uh, dreams. It may seem like a simple choice to cooperate with and save everyone you can, but the stronger Wonderland is, the more easily Garant Naka can use it to strike out against the waking world. Will you protect Wonderland while bolstering the shadows, or will you burn it away as you cauterize the wounds that the Eater of Dreams inflicted on Arkham? How will Alice's psyche fare as you traverse her strange streams? Be aware of anything that could help preserve her sanity. Check camp and log. If the investigators went down the rabbit hole, well, we didn't. If the investigators went through the looking glass, skip to interlude the White Queen. This is interlude will be on page 41. Let's see, 41, the White Queen. So, I'm actually deciding not to read the interludes, because there is... I'll just show, uh, so each interlude will come between uh, scenarios, so the interludes are like two pages long, so there's a lot to read. So when, when and if you will decide to play this yourself, there's at least something to re be revealed. I will limit my reading only to the uh, scenario intros and uh, resolutions. But I'll, I'll leave this unread, and I'll just go through what happened in the interlude in the next video. But yeah, uh, that is the first scenario of uh, Alice in Wonderland campaign by the Beard. And we did pretty well, so we got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 experience altogether. That is enough to, for me to get what I want for the deck, so I uh, one upgraded optic more and the um, Underworld Market up, uh, card, so that I can put all of my illicit cards into the market and get 10 new cards into my deck, so that is what I'm going to do next, so uh, we'll see in the next video, so hope you guys like this playthrough, thanks for watching and until next time.